Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, A Wandering Dork with me, Daniel. It's Season 5, Episode 3, and today we're back for a big game at the start of September. We're playing the highest reputation side in the league in Bolton, and we're trying to get another strong three points at home after a pretty solid start to the League 2 season. But we start on the profile of Terrell Whittaker, partly to avoid any spoilers, but also because despite the new season and new players, he is still the man who's standing out in front of goal. Four goals in five starts including a hat trick another goal and an assist as well he really is playing quite well for us so far and continues to improve both on and off the pitch it also allows me to say a massive thank you to everyone who continues to follow this series and the channel in general. A massive thank you for your support, it really is greatly appreciated. If you've missed any of this season or series so far, you can click back in the eye above to catch up with the whole playlist. And there's also links to our journeyman story, the head coach, and my podcast match day vlogs as well. But if you are enjoying the series and looking forward to another big game today, please do put a thumbs up on the video. And if you're new to the channel, then subscribe for daily FM20 content from both of these these long-term stories. The head coach is certainly going through an interesting moment as well. It's been a bizarre last two episodes in that one too. But on to today's action, you can see the progress the likes of Whitaker are making. There's a few others on the same upward curve as well. And if we go to the home screen, you can see how we're doing on the pitch. Things going just as well, to be honest. 10 points after 5 games, only just getting our first defeat against Burton. A side that we play again in the leasing.com trophy in midweek, something we're going to have to be wary of. We've got a few injury problems as well. The likes of Sherin and Harry are out, in addition to Rory Feely now. A couple coming in on trial at the moment. They're of course both unavailable today. Bolton and just missing one and they're up in fourth two so it's turned into an early top of the table clash let's go and have a look at how we've been doing recently though of course you know we lost that game against Burton but before that we've been absolutely brilliant just disappointment in the Carabao Cup we said we were going to do that we weren't expecting much from our backup side following our 2-1-1 against Salford in the last episode we drew two all away at Dagenham and Redbridge a brilliant 91st minute equaliser from Keelan O'Connell another star appearance off the bench for him Terrell Whitaker getting his first goal of the season there before adding to that with a hat trick later on. As we mentioned, we fell to a heavy defeat against League One Wimbledon in the Carabao Cup. Joe Piggott getting a goal and a Samuel brace as well. But we returned to winning ways in the league campaign. Newport County being beaten 2-0. Harriet getting his first for the club and Mole scoring as well. Before a demolition of Walsall away from home. A 5-1 victory, a brace for Presley, a hat-trick from Terrell Whitaker, And a red card for them late on. But by then it was already well beyond doubt. A brilliant performance and generally pretty good across the board. But a disappointment away against Burton. A side that are expected to do well this year, but had had a poor season up until that point. Fabio Lopez missed a penalty. He had a pretty shocking game on the right. A really disappointing result, that one. But other than that, it's been a brilliant start. And we certainly don't look at threat of being near the bottom. So let's go and have a look at the dynamics just to see how that's coming along. Very good managerial support. Excellent, in fact, on that one. And very good dressing room atmosphere too. The team cohesion's improving, so everything's looking pretty nice. And we've got a couple more signings to look at as well. I'm sure you noticed them on there. I was trying to tease them through that. But let's go and have a look at the ones that have joined the club. Two more loan signings since the last episode. You were aware of both of them. One we looked at at the end of the last episode. A replacement for the injured Sam Sherin. And it's Ashley Morsey, the four-star centre-half. Five-star potential on loan from Manchester City. Been brilliant so far. A rating of 7.4. And even bagged himself an assist too. Then a familiar face joining on the same day as him. Matthew Smith on loan from Derby. Three and a half star ability, four and a half potential, a brilliant midfield playmaker as we know, already made 88 appearances for the club, four of them coming since rejoining, and an average rating above a seven yet again, mentally he's got the quality of a 30 year old. So everything's going well on and off the pitch, we're just still looking for that elusive striker, but with Presley and Whitaker in the form they currently are, there's not too much for us to worry about at this stage, Parkhouse will get another go in the leasing.com trophy, and hopefully we can get him amongst the goals soon as well. Let's go and get into this big game against Bolton though, of course a very important one in the stage of our season they're expected to finish 8th and compete for the playoffs and we want to try and do the same this season, we've got to get a top half finish and stay well clear of that relegation pack and if we can compete at the top end of the table too, it really would put us in a very strong position. So as we mentioned, 5th v 4th as it currently stands we've just had our first defeat of the season Bolton on the other hand yet to lose a game, 2 draws and 3 wins in a row since then, they're really flying at the moment, they've just found their 4th 
form and we've got what's nearly a full house at Meadowbank today, although Bolton are very slight favourites for the match. Let's go and have a look to see if they've got anyone special. Not sure if they've got any of the remaining players. I recognise the first name, Eddie Brown. There's a couple in there that I do recognise. The likes of Ronan Darcy and Ryan Hedges are good players. They've got far more quality across the pitch than we have. But let's go and have a look at our team selection. CD11 we've gone for today. We're of course in a pretty good position in the league. But Sherin's still missing via injury. And we're just a little bit short on the wings at the moment. But Ryan Broom's back from an injury of his own. That means Fabio Lopez dropped after his awful performance and penalty miss last time. But I don't think Broom's got 90 minutes in him. So we will have to be careful and keep an eye on that. But our 11's pretty familiar aside. It's Grant Smith continuing in goal. Simpson and Anthony the fullbacks. With Jones and Morsley now at centre half. Moles and Matthew Smith reunited in the middle. Broom on the right wing, O'Connell on the left and Presley and Whittaker continue up front. We've still been doing a bit better when we've had the two attacking wingers so we're just sticking with those in those more advanced roles for now but we can drop them back if we have a lead to defend Now I don't know if that'll be a problem in this game. We're still turning through the process of trying to gel a few in. The likes of Dolan making a few appearances off the bench now. Hoodart's going to come in, he's playing in the cup games at present and of course we've got Morsley straight into the side as we've had a few injuries in defence. But let's go and get into this game against Bolton. It's sure to be a pretty tight one. And let's hope we can be the side that comes out on top. We'll certainly need the best performances to do so. Well, a 4-2-3-1 for Bolton. A few decent players in that side. Couple of regens too. We don't know what to expect from them. So let's just go and encourage the lads. And hopefully in the half we'll be able to put in a strong performance. Matthew Smith's motivated. He agrees with Nick Haycock. But let's see what we can do in the first half. Can we perform to the best of our ability? And can we take a lead early on in this match? Well, nearly 10 minutes on the clock and the first highlights of Grant Smith clearance. Dropped down but cleared away by Anthony. And he's managed to put Whitaker in one-on-one -on -one there. Good save by Reese as he went for the near post. He just felt he had to try and go across the keeper there. But he tried to trick him and unfortunately is tipped behind for a corner. Good long ball from Anthony though. Moles with a corner causing havoc too. Presley beat into it in the air though. And now McCoy's coming away on the counter. He's in behind. He's taking on the defender. Beats Anthony who trips him. I think that's going to be a red card, you know. He is very lucky to get away with the yellow. We'll take that all day long as we would happily have gone down to 10 men then. We would have accepted the red card pretty peacefully but thankfully Thomas Anthony gets away with it. Is more Taylor with a throw on the left for Bolton. Really getting on top now at this stage. Moles heads away but it's straight to Davidson. Shipley picking it up again in the middle. Goes wide to Fossey the overlapping fullbacks. Three or four in the box if he can find them. O'Connell brings it down and eventually clears. Whitaker holds it up on halfway. It's a brilliant turn though. He's skinned the centre half and now he's in one on one but again the lack of composure has got to him. Good save to tip it over from the keeper. But he didn't have to move. It was straight at him. Either side it would have been 1-0. Moles into the front post. Ficked on and scored. Presley with the near post flick on. The classic corner routine. Get to the front post and glance. And there's Keelan O'Connell on the left wing. Pouncing at the back stick to volley it in. From two yards out he nicks us the lead. It's pretty much deserved based on the game so far. But Bolton have got a brilliant threat on the counter attack. And with half an hour gone this game's far from over. We are momentarily top of the league though so we can enjoy that if nothing else and they're starting to pick up yellow cards at the back too maybe there's just a hint of frustration creeping in for them Half time, no further highlights. A 1 0 lead at a packed Meadow Bank. Look at those seating areas, they're absolutely full of fans. Great to see that down here. The local community really getting behind the club. And we're going to tell the lads we're pleased with their efforts so far. They all look delighted, and rightly so. Been a really solid performance against a very good side. Free kick from Moles from 30 yards out into Morsley, who heads in. Brilliant finish, a wonderful header. His first goal for the club and in his career in total. A brilliant finish, and it's into the roof of the net. Just overlooped the keeper and it's a great delivery from Stefan Moles as well. An hour gone we've doubled our lead to two. Came out of nowhere that set piece. It was taken very quickly after the highlight started and we've seen off a few more minutes since as well. Just 20 to go and there's no further highlights so let's go and make a change or two. Matt Smith's still coming up to fitness in the holding role so he'll be replaced by Matt Dolan and we'll get back into it and save the other two for a while. We just want to try and time waste as we go along. Well 15 left. Nothing more happening. I'm going to bring off Ryan Broom now. He's struck Struggling for fitness, of course he's back after that layoff. Fabio Lopez will get a run out on the right. And we'll go back into it for the last 15. One more change we can make if we need it. McGee on the left with a throw into Darcy. Bolton causing a bit of trouble coming forward now. Morsley hacks away the cross off the line. And he falls for Finch at left back. He finds Barmby in the middle for Bolton. Still camped in our final third. McGee delivers it, falls for Wedgwood. Great block by the left back Anthony. He's been a revelation this year. Morsley heads the second ball away. It only falls for McGee though. Beats one and 
shoots and it hits the bar. Just skims it on its way over the crossbar. And it's out for a goal kick as we survive again. James Simpson's picked up a bruised shin. And with five to go, he's really struggling physically. So I'm just going to bring on Lomas at right back for the last few. And hopefully he'll do a job holding on for us out there. Of course, those of you following the head coach will know he's featuring in that one too. We've just joined our new club and Lewis Lomas was there. Coming along quite nicely in that career. Developed far more than he has in this one. And again, playing at League 2 level pretty well. But in that campaign, he's starting for us. Into four minutes of stoppage time. We're halfway through it unscathed. We're 2-0 up. We're looking comfortable. I don't even feel the need to time waste now. Although I may regret that if they score from here. Jones doing well to head away to Moles. He's gone short to Dolan. Just keeping the ball well in the middle. The experience really showing. And he's put Presley in with a brilliant pass. And it's another wonderful save from Rees. Our third clear cut chance. We haven't scored from any of them. But we have managed to get the two goals to win it. It's a goal kick. Just 30 seconds left. Grant Smith will take it. And there shouldn't be much after it. Long ball forward towards Terrell Whitaker, Though Dolan does well to bring it down again. He finds O'Connell on the left wing. Trying to take on the full back and wins the challenge against Fossey but the second time he manages to win it back the Bolton defender doing a pretty good job he goes in the middle to Darcy but just a couple of seconds remaining the full time whistle duly goes and we win the game 2-0 and do we stay at the top of the table or have we been overtaken before the end of the game we did well and performed magnificently no one really gave us a chance pre-match we were underdogs in the media and below them in the league but that's all changed after the match so there we go with six games played we are momentarily top of the league MK Don's in second, they've got a game in hand though, so let's see if they end up overtaking us. I wonder if it's just because of the international break they're not playing, or is it because of other competitions? Now MK Don's just on TV tomorrow, so we will skip ahead and see that before the episode finishes, just to see if we can stay top of the league, or will MK Don's get the point they need? Either way, if they lose, Notts County will then jump above us as well, so we aren't going to finish this episode top of the league, but it will be interesting to see how far we fall, and what the table looks like after six rounds of fixtures. A really strong result though, Grimsby winning again, they're up in 5th place with the goalkeeper we wanted, so let's see how the media rated that game, they just want to talk about us going top. We had less possession, less shots, but looked the better side on the break, and we had 3 clear cut chances as well, and took advantage of set pieces too. A great header from Morsley, his first goal for the club, Keelan O'Connell firing in yet again, he's had a pretty prolific start so far, 2 goals in 4 appearances, and only 2 of those have been starts as well. Morsley impresses, so we're going to go and praise him, he's done a really Really good job defensively too and James Simpson's knocks only one or two days and he'll be back to full fitness for the MK Dons match next week. A massive game at the top of the table and we want to see what form MK Dons come into it in so we're going to skip ahead to tomorrow and see how they get on in the televised game against Notts County. Fingers crossed they'll lose in that one and we'll be able to build confidence against them next week. Well before we look at the League 2 fixture one more bit of news to show you. Woking coming in for Paul McGowan they're in the Vanarama National League they want him as their first choice right back so we can't really deny him that. If we need to get someone, then we will on a free. But I think we've got enough in the squad to cope with it. We're still top of League 2, so I'm wondering what's happened. The game's not kicking off till 4 o'clock. I was almost getting a little bit excited about the miracle there. But let's skip ahead and see what the result of that game is. Well, there we go. Another win for MK Dons. The only side to remain unbeaten this season. A 1-0 win, strongly supported by a red card to Notts County. That in the first half they managed to deal with. They did really well to hold on and get a decent result there. 1-0, not the worst they could have done. MK Dons with a goal difference of 8. Joined top with us in terms of the league campaign. We're really prolific and we look a good side. And I'm thinking we can compete for the top 7 this year. Let's go to our inbox and see what's there. A few players getting fitness in the under-23s. Jake Gallagher still leading us off the pitch a brilliant professional is doing well in the mentoring group but overall a really good episode and we're doing a lovely job as well just got to find that striker to help us out of course now the transfer window shuts so it is just about getting in free agents we've got two on trial at the moment who i will quickly tease for you before we finished just so you can see which ones might be joining next week if you're wondering what all these rules are on the left here it's just for the leasing.com trophy there's so many weird things for being a qualifying player they change the rules every year to make it harder and harder so let's hide the unavailable players here see the two that we've got on loan at the moment I'm not sure either of them are good enough just yet. They're both target men, which isn't really what we're looking for. But Elijah Adebayo's the first one. He's a two to three star ability player who may well be able to do a job for us. He scored a few goals for Walsall and Coventry in the past. So possibly a solution for us temporarily. And the other one's Ben House. He's a target man too. Scoring goals for Chesterfield and Arbroath previously. Another target man with similar ability. So I'm just waiting to see if either of them can shine. I'm not sure that they're going to be the solution. So we might just have to wait 
until January. The boys certainly aren't doing too bad at the moment, but as you saw in that game, we're still wasting clear-cut chances. I'm hoping Parkhouse will come good. He's still got a little bit of time to adapt. Of course, made a few appearances off the bench already, but yet to get his first goal for the club. But otherwise a really good start to the season and things are looking pretty rosy at Dorking. I'm not sure we'll be able to get promoted this season, but we could compete for the top seven. And if we can get experience at the playoffs, I'll be there and thereabouts. It'll certainly give us confidence moving into next year. Considering we started as a semi-pro club and this is only our second year as a professional team, we really are coming along very quickly. And we've got a massive game coming up at the end of this month, Notts County away from home. I'm not sure if they'll still be up there, so we might well show that one. If not, we'll come back at some point in October, maybe to play the Tottenham game on camera too. I know it's the under 23s, but it's still a massive club that we're playing against. And either side of that, Forest Green and Colchester, both mid-table teams for now. So we'll probably pick out the Tottenham game on one of the ones either side, just so you get a little bit of action from all competitions and get to see some of our young future stars as well. But if you did enjoy this episode and that really strong performance against Bolton, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of that counter-attacking display. What what else we can do to improve our tactic I don't think there's much we can do other than get a more prolific striker but for now we're still getting the results that matter so hopefully we'll be able to stay near the top end let me know in the comments how you think we're getting on this season am I right to sacrifice the leasing.com trophy I'm sort of torn between two things it's a real chance for us to try and compete for a competition a day out of Wembley which would be great but also I don't want to risk our league form we really haven't got a massive squad and with the injuries at the moment I feel like we've got to look after them and put out a complete battle back upside in the cup. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content from my two long-term stories. As we mentioned, we'll be back in two days' time to face Tottenham and one of the league games from League 2 as well. And the head coach series has had a recent change of job, our first one of the series so far. It's been an exciting last week or so, so do go back and check it out. I really do appreciate your continued support with it. I also had the channel update on Wednesday on New Year's Day, so if you haven't seen that yet and want to know what's planned for the year, please do go back and catch up with that one. And then finally, I'm part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews we go to different football games in the lower leagues and share our experience with it and we also interview different people from the footballing world so if that's your sort of thing please do give it a try the link to the match day vlogs is in the eye above and you can also check us out on spotify for the interviews but a massive thanks for watching and your continued support with this series and the channel in general i really do appreciate your continued support and hope you'll join me next time for the first double header of the season <laughs>